Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through stock issuance accounting. So let's talk for a minute about valuing stock, because remember, in any accounting transaction, you have to be able to put a valuation to the thing that you are either debiting or crediting. And stock's a little bit tricky in that sense, in the sense of that stock may or may not contain a face value on it, which might be known as the par value if it's literally written on the certificate, or the stated value if it's just an unwritten but stated um, value to that stock. Now, first of all, why might this happen? And then second, why does this matter? Um, so one, it's actually required if you um, are incorporated in certain states that you put a face value on your stock. Um, it is typically an immaterial value. And this is to avoid liability. So think about if you put a value on your stock, say you call it $10 per share, and your business, because of, I don't know, economic times, because it's just not very good, because of whatever, let's just say your business really only earns enough money to be worth, say, $8 per share. Well, your stock is, is upside down in value, right? You say the stock is worth 10, but your business only warrants eight. Um, basically, you owe your investors $2 per share. Um, and so it, it creates this funky liability situation. So what companies typically do instead is, is they assign a uh, par value of like 0 0.0001 cents or something like that, where, where it's so small that it would be immaterial and therefore would not create one of these upside down liability situations. Um, it only matters for accounting purposes. It does not matter. And here's the key. It does not matter one bit for actual valuation purposes. So stocks trade in an open market. They're subject to supply and demand. They're subject to competition. Um, stocks are valued at whatever the market establishes that their value will be. And that value is rarely, rarely going to match the face value. However, that face value will come into play um, uh, as part of the accounting. So let's take a look at how that happens. Um, notice here I say stock issuance involves the receipt of an asset, usually cash. And so going forward, I, I'm pretty much just going to treat it like it's going to be cash in exchange for ownership in the form of shares of stock. Now let's take a look at this journal entry. In this case, what we received was $20,000 of cash. Okay, so that's what the company receives by issuing the stock. But look at the credits here. You don't see a credit to common stock or preferred stock for $20,000. What you actually see here is a credit to common or preferred stock for $2,000 and a credit to additional paid in capital for common or preferred stock of $18,000. So what this is suggesting to us is that the par value or stated value of the stock is only $2,000 because it's only the par or stated value, par or stated value, that you can actually put in your stock account. Anything in excess of that, that you simply get because of market forces, that goes into what's known as additional paid in capital. So this is excess above par slash stated value due to market valuation. And of course, the market grand total has said, hey, this stock is worth $20,000, and that's why they give you $20,000 in cash. For accounting purposes, you have to attribute that $20,000 between the par or stated value and the excess, known as additional paid in capital. Let's see this in an example. On May 1st, Flyercore decides to go public and authorizes 300,000 shares of common stock and 125,000 shares of preferred stock for sale. On May 15th, Flyer Court issues 200,000 shares of common stock for $1 million, and all 125,000 shares of preferred stock for $800,000. The common shares have a par value of one, the preferred shares have a par value of two. Record the journal entry for the issuance of stock. So remember, at the end of the day, this company collected cash, and it collected cash on May 15th, the day it issued the stock. And that cash had a grand total of $1 million for the common stock and $800,000 for the preferred stock. So cash 
of $1.8 million. You did issue common stock. So we are going to credit common stock. That's an equity account. Equity accounts are credited when they go up. A lot of times students have trouble with this. They, they, they get confused because they say, well, wait a minute, but you're issuing the stock. You're giving it away. So why is it going up? Shouldn't it be going down? And that does sound confusing if you're thinking of stock like you would think of inventory, right? When you give inventory over to the customer, inventory goes down. But this is not a matter of giving someone um, a certificate. That's not what you're actually tracking with the accounting. What you're tracking is the increased value attributed to external ownership. And so by that respect, this is going up when investors invest in you. So you've got the common stock. You're also going to be issuing some preferred stock. And of course, we've got to put a value to this. So let's take a look. The common stock, 200,000 shares, and it says they have a par value of $1. That means that you are going to put $200,000 in the common stock account. That is 200,000 times $1 par value. 200,000 shares times $1 par. We do the same with the preferred stock. The preferred stock, we issued 125,000 shares. They had a par value of $2.00. So that is going to work uh, out to $250,000. I'll write the math down here just so you see where I got that from. That's 125,000 shares times $2 par. Now, of course, that does not add up to the $1.8 million we received. The rest of the value goes into what's known as additional paid in capital, and we are going to want to split that up to specify what additional paid in capital belong to common stocks? So notice I put here APIC for additional paid in capital dash common stock. Now I'll create another one, APIC dash PS for preferred stock. To calculate how much goes into each one, we have to calculate what was the excess above par that we got in cash related to each one. So with the common stock, we issued it for $1 million. We already determined that the par value was 200000 Therefore, the excess that we received was 800000 For the preferred stock, we issued it for $800,000. We already determined that the par value was two fifty, dollars and therefore the additional paid-in capital on that one was $550,000. So in both of these cases, this is simply excess received above the par value, okay? And this is pretty much how every stock issuance looks like. Um, here I combined common and preferred, but if it had just been a common problem or just been a preferred problem, they all would have looked the same way. You get a certain amount of cash, allocate the cash between the par value or stated value if it's not par value and the additional that you received on top of it. All right, here we have the same situation. However, we've added a little bit onto it. It says, um, so, so all this first part is the same. However, it says, show the balance sheet presentation of shareholders' equity the year after issuance, assuming retained earnings from operation are 75000 and no additional stock has been issued. So what I'm going to do real quick, just to simplify things, is I'm going to come back here and I am going to copy this part of our journal entry, the, the shareholders' equity piece of our journal entry. I'm going to copy that, bring it with us to the next slide. And so if we want to do shareholders' equity section of the balance sheet, formerly the shareholders' equity section of the balance sheet has kind of a header on it. So shareholders, whoop, don't need two S's, equity. From there, you're going to start with your stock, your regular paid-in capital, and you typically list the preferred stock first. So I'm going to go ahead and put the preferred stock in there first. Then you would list the common stock. And we'll put it second. After you do your paid in capital, your par stated value stock, then you're going to do your additional paid in capitals. And again, preferred first. I'm going to take that 550, put it next. Then you're going to have your common additional paid in capital. And then after that is when you are typically going to list your retained earnings. In this case, it told us that retained earnings from operations are 75,000. So retained earnings, 75,000. 
And then at that point, if you had other things like um, accumulated other comprehensive income, you would list that. Or if you had treasury stock, you would list that as a subtraction to your equity. We don't have anything like that in this case. So all we're left to do is tally this up. And that is going to come out to 1.875 million total SE. We were not given liabilities information, but had we been given liabilities information, we would add a line below this total L plus SE and show the combined total for that. But this is how you are going to present your stock um, in your shareholders equity section of your balance sheet. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.